there guys and welcome back to my channel. I hope you're all having a fantastic evening or day wherever you are in the world. I feel like I've just filmed a really controversial post for Instagram. Basically, there's this new trend. It's called Barbie Botox. The hashtag Barbie Botox has gained over 6.7 million TikTok viewers with women sharing their before and after photos of basically slimming down their neck, weakening the muscle of the traps. Not only is there Barbie Botox for your traps, you have Barbie shoulders, Barbie arms, to get lean arms like Barbie, to have a slimmer neck like Barbie. I obviously feel a certain type of way about that. One, because look at my traps. And two, I'm just like, why is this come back around when you want to look like Barbie? Women should not want to aspire to look like a, a Barbie doll. I feel like it's so, when I was like five years old and it was damaging. Anyway, that's not what today's video is on, but I feel like it'd be a very good video. Today's video is Running 101. I am in London. I am hosting an event with Wit and Whoop and I'm doing a run around London tomorrow morning. I thought I'd take you with me. But Running 101 is basically everything that I have learned and everything that I know about running. From socks to footwear to my garments to my whoop, to my accessories, to intervals, tempos, heart rate runs. And I think because I'm asked all these questions every single day, I was like, why don't I just put it into one video that people can then refer back to and I can refer you guys to? So give it a big like and subscribe. But yeah, it's basically going to continue into tomorrow because now I'm heading over to WIT to go and do a class. I'm not taking the class. I just thought I'd join in. Um, so I'll see you soon. Oh, it's early. I say it's early. I've been getting up at this time. Further back, this days. <sighs> um, I'm just going to have a coffee. Love it when my coffee's nice and small. Today we are off on a run and it'll be a 10k run. There's a 5k loop and a 10k loop. I am hosting, I am leading with wit times whoop, which is very exciting. Today I'm wanting to do running 101. So the first thing obviously is getting changed and getting into my run gear. I always talk about my run gear because I kind of have staple pieces that I wear and that I love. It's also gorgeous weather, so I am going to be in shorts. And I am going to show you. We have the two-in-one shorts on. I really love a two-in-one short because I don't get chafing from it. I mean, I don't get chafing from any of the Gymshark shorts anyway in terms of running. They also have the speed shorts, the ones I wore for my ultra. But I do really love these. And I also love the colour of them. I think they're really nice. Um, because it's very hot today, I've decided to run in a vest and a sports bra. So this is just the Adapt vest. Um, just like a normal racer back vest and then the low impact sports bras now I'm not a big boob gal so I don't need a high impact sports bra but if you are I would recommend wear a high impact sports bra so you're more comfy in terms of socks now socks has been an interesting thing for me because my feet are just they're not the best they're only not the best basically my toenails from way back when when i did the ultra they just kind of dropped off and then from then they just seem to drop off a lot more commonly now these are a couple of the socks that i wear so this is a shorter pair from solomon and as you can see in terms of like the heels the toes they have different pinpoints the side of your ankle the side of your foot the bottom of your feet they're a bit more ribbed and people don't really look at socks and think oh i need to wear good socks to run you do elevate jacket the reason i like this one is because it's a very thin material and when you're running and get too hot you can do this you can roll it all the way up i do get hot on runs so being able to roll it up is obviously fantastic news so that is basically the running outfit. In terms of shoes, the only ones I bought with me, I think in my head I maybe thought it was a faster 10K, but it's not. It's actually probably like five minute 30 per K. So really nice. Um, but these are the Nike Alpha Fly Next Percent 2. Now these are a racing shoe or a speed shoe. So I do my interval runs and tempo runs in these shoes. But I'm also doing my marathon thins, plural, in these shoes. So I do need to break them in a bit. Um, the furthest distance that I have actually ran in them is a 26K at marathon pace, which I did last Tuesday. It was great. I did my 26K at a 4.30 pace. But I mean, the last 3K, I did feel like I was going to have a heart attack because I had got the worst stitch 
ever known to man. As in, when I say the worst stitch, I was like, oh my God, I'm going to have to stop. Still hit an average pace, which is awesome news. So shoes are on. Would not recommend to just do an easy run in these, but they're the only shoes that I have with me. The reason that I'm running sunglasses is because one, when it's like bright or sunny, can't see. Two, it stops anything going in your eyes because these ones bend under and they go all the way around here. So nothing flicks up into your eye. When you're running, this is a very common occurrence and I don't like that. This is a really weird one. I don't love making eye contact with people when I'm running. You know, like direct eye contact. I smile at every single person that I run past. Like I'm a really smiley runner. But yeah, I just like wearing my sunglasses. Okay, the last two things before I need to head over because I think I'm running a tiny little bit late is my Garmin. The Garmin that I wear is the Garmin Phoenix 6S Pro Sapphire and I would highly recommend it to anyone so this is my Garmin here and it has everything on for me so all of these different things you can choose from in terms of exercises what you're doing honestly there's so so many obviously for me the main ones that I use on here are running and the strength trainer isn't actually very good it doesn't work that well so I tend to put it on HIT when I'm doing strength training. So it just records heart rate, calories and time. Obviously, running is the one we're going to use today. And this is what it will show me on my specific screen. So you've got distance, timer, heart rate and pace. And then you can just scroll through the different screens in terms of what you want when you're running, the time. The map is really useful as well. You can also just set your workouts on here. So if I go on run, I hold it down and I go to training, workouts. I have a lot of runs that I've programmed in from the Garmin Connect. So for example, her 30 easy, 60 marathon pace, you can click new workout, you can view the workout and it will tell you exactly what it is and then you can just start it. So you could obviously just go off on a run with the Garmin and nothing else and that would be perfect. I did a 60K before my ultra and I just, I set a, workout on my Garmin so I said plan me a route for 60k and it did and I just followed it and you can follow it on the map quite easily and it was honestly absolutely fantastic I think it's great I felt very safe doing that also my whoop obviously my whoop is my pride and joy so this is me this morning look at that 92% recovery resting heart rate 43 HRV 138 my whoop shows me everything it shows me how I'm sleeping how I'm recovering how hard I've worked 24-7 wearable that you have on your wrist. You guys know that I work with Whoop and I have done for over about a year and a half now actually and it's a product that I just absolutely love. It's just, it shows you just so much information about yourself and your body and I don't get why people wouldn't want to kind of know it, if that makes sense. You don't have to be an athlete. You don't have to be elite. Like you, it's nothing to do with that. It will really change your life. The stress monitoring thing's really good because my stress gets really high. I obviously have a free month code where you can get a free month and you get the whoop band included which is pretty freaking awesome so you don't actually pay for this when you use my link you just use the link you get the band sent to you and you get a free month and um, so yeah that's freaking awesome and i my friends i'm running late i have actually never been to whip before the first time was yesterday and i did a really really good class session thing <laughs> with Obi. I got here early because I'm always early everywhere. I thought I was going to be late, but I'm not. I'm really early, which is great. I wanted to touch on the one thing that I'm always asked about, the difference between tempo intervals and then easy slash heart rate run. When we say easy slash heart rate, it means easy for yourself and you're at an aerobic pace. You're in zone two or zone three. You have different heart rate zones, one to five. When you have Whoop or Garmin or when you even go upload to Strava, it will show you your different zones. Aerobic runs, easy heart rate. This is what people refer to them as because it is an easy pace for yourself to have a lower heart rate on the run. For me, 136 to 150 or 149. And that is an easy run for me, like easy heart rate. Nice and steady, I do long runs. I do different varieties of runs. My longest run of my prep for the marathon will be 34. The reason that you do easy heart rate runs and aerobic runs is to increase your fitness. Your capillary count increases. You have more oxygen oxygen running around your body, you have more red blood cells, you are fitter. Now this means when you go into a faster run, so a race for example, you have a higher level of fitness to go faster and keep your heart rate lower. If you keep your heart rate lower, you can actually go for longer at that quicker pace because you've increased your aerobic capacity. So easy runs are really, really important. With my coach app, obviously we have the whole new high rock section. 
so we are the official digital partner of High Rocks. So if you have any High Rocks coming up, you can pay just £30 a month rather than £200 a month for coaching for High Rocks. And it has those specific runs in as well. So hit the link below, get involved, join up, be a part of the party. We also have a marathon lifting programme, a um, half marathon programme, a lifting programme, a 5K programme, a 10K programme. We've got it all, so hit the link below. The next one is intervals and tempo. Now, a tempo run is where you're running at a set pace for a period of time. And this could be 5K at 10K pace, or it could be 10K at half marathon pace. It could just be setting yourself a specific pace to hit, which is usually RPE, so rate of perceived exertion. Seven or eight out of 10. So you are pushing and you're pushing hard, and it's the pace you can keep up for that whole time tempo runs are hard they are they are probably one of my favorites but they are definitely hard so for example that 26k that i did the other day was at marathon pace so that was at a hard pace or 26k that was a long one it could be anywhere from like like a 3k all the way up to a big number finally intervals interval training is ridiculously important to get that speed in there and to get that fast work in there for when you are running now an interval could be sprints it could be track work it could be based off distance it could be based off time a lot of my intervals that I do for example I give you a session would be 15 minutes warm-up nice easy pace warm-up but I start building it by the time I'm getting to the end of the 15 minutes I will then do four lots of two minutes on with a minute jogging in between each round and then four lots of three minutes on with a minute of jogging between each round and I am going hard on these two or three minute period intervals and I'm literally pushing it and I'll set a specific pace of what I need to do. So it could be a 3.45 per two minutes and then a 3.50 or a 3.45 again per three minutes. The reason you do intervals is to get faster, to work on your pace, to push yourself somewhere where you haven't pushed yourself before because they are very challenging. Intervals are tough, they are hard, and I think it's a really important thing to add into your training. So I do three runs a week. I do one hard interval slash tempo session, and then I do a smaller easy run, so like anywhere from a 10 to a 13 or 16K. And then I do a longer run, which is anything over 21K, and this could be either a tempo or an easy heart rate run. This morning on our run, we're doing an easy heart rate run because the pace I have told to run at, because it's a group of people, is a 5.30 per K. So that's what we're gonna do this morning. And I'm excited. The outfit is giving summery vibes and it's actually very hot. Is that St. Paul? Yeah, fun fact. Hello everybody. <laughs> we are 4K into the 10K run with everybody. Steph has just joined. Hey. hey. Um, and it's actually a gorgeous day. Beautiful Yesterday day. was terrible. Beautiful day. Beautiful day. Yesterday was terrible. I don't usually run in London because I get scared. <laughs> I don't know where to run, I don't know what to do. Um, but it's the Wit Times Week Run Club. And it's great times, great vibes. Oh, stunning though, look at that. <laughs> she's back she's home she's back in the home gymnasium two things i need to discuss so we've talked about what i wear why i wear it my garmin my whoop different sorts of runs you saw the run this morning which was wonderful and i think as well those sort of runs it was running in a community and i think that's such a wonderful thing to do as i said we are starting the My Coach Track Days, which are on a Sunday. I won't share which day it is yet. We already had 200 people sign up, so we're gonna have to have a booking system where we have 40 people per track session. We thought it's a really good idea as well to do it on a Sunday because it gets you up and out, ready for the day, whatever you have planned. And also, we've got a few people in the community who wanna reduce drinking or reduce their alcohol intake. And it kind of means if you're getting up and you're booked onto a Sunday morning track session with My Coach, obviously, you don't really wanna be feeling a bit groovy and hungover, so I think it's a really nice thing to do and I can't wait to start those sessions. Anywho, running and food, running and fuel, running and how much do I need to eat? This is a very common question. Now, one thing to touch on is I need you to be probably at calorie maintenance or in a calorie surplus, depending on how much you're running. The thing is, running is not really the best tool for fat loss to do it for fat loss specifically, because one, I don't think that would be that enjoyable. Doing lists and steady state cardio alongside a calorie deficit is probably your best thing for fat loss. I've got a free calorie calculator below. You can click on it, hit the link. It's free and it'll give your, your calories. I'd usually recommend a slight deficit, um, so a mild deficit if your goal is fat loss or weight loss. 
The thing is if you are running also, the reason that I don't really recommend people to be in a deficit is because it expends quite a lot of energy and you need the energy to run. This is talking hypothetically, um, how much you're running does depend on this, obviously. If you're doing even like 20K a week, you're expending a lot of energy and you're, you're probably running pretty far. Now, your body will change as you run anyway. I don't change weight, like my weight has not changed. The only time I drop weight was before my ultra, like a month out, my weight literally just seemed to do this. I could not physically get enough calories in. I ended up, because I had to track, I was on 5,000 calories a day. And then before the ultra, I don't know if it was nerves or whatever it was, I, my appetite was just not it, like it was not there. So I ended up dropping like four or five kilos, but then after the race, I ended up putting it back on within like eight weeks. So that was kind of an anomaly. And I just, I felt actually really quite uncomfortable when I was that weight. I didn't feel like myself. I'd lost quite a bit of muscle. And the idea behind being hybrid is running endurance. So, or swimming or cycling. So something endurance wise. And then also lifting. So being strong, being athletic, being muscular. That is what being hybrid is. And I think it's such a special place to be and a wonderful place to be, which is why I kind of promote running and lifting so much because your heart health, you just feel better, your lungs, your overall fitness, you are physically fitter. As we spoke about when we talked about easy runs, aerobic runs, you obviously feel a lot better. I don't want people to be running to burn calories. I just don't think that is a very good way to approach running. I think you should approach running with enjoyment, with purpose, with a goal, with different things that you want to do and that you want to achieve. Look at me, my little new rower. There's not really much else that I think I need to go over because you guys know and I express in every single video the importance of weight training and running and it's not just running helps your weight training, it helps stability, it helps core strength, it helps you be stronger. Your strength training also enhances your running significantly, so working on unilateral movements. If you go back a couple of videos, I really talk about this. It just makes you generally stronger, you know, you'll have a stronger core, you'll have a stronger upper body, your legs will be stronger, you'll be able to power yourself through in a different way that you've probably not been able to do if you're just running so they they kind of come hand in hand and i'm not saying you need to do like four runs and four weight sessions or three and three you can literally mix it up however you want but dabbling in both of them is honestly one of the best things that i have ever done comment what else you would like to see from me i think next week's video basically i am having next week seven injections um because I am off to do Everest Base Camp in November, I'm doing Nepal. So I'm having these injections at 8 a.m. on Tuesday and I have a YouTube planned, but guys, I obviously don't know how I'm gonna feel after having seven injections. I'm not great after one injection. The thought of it makes me a bit queasy. Um, so I don't know actually know what next week's YouTube video is gonna be, comment what it should be. Should it just be a day of me resting? <laughs> because I've been feeling terrible after the injections. Um, let me know. I know you guys love me talking on the videos and like my actual self, but I also do love doing the challenges. If there's any challenges you think that I should do or try, please, please comment them below. Whatever it is, you know I love to give stuff a go. Give it a big thumbs up, subscribe if you're not already, and I'll see you in my next one. Bye.